Hi there, I'm Colin Green. You're listening to Spike Pit, but this is not one of my normal episodes. I'm calling these episodes my drive-by episodes, wherein I speak a little bit more candidly about the things that are on my mind. I'll be pulling less punches, maybe biting a bit less on my tongue. Now, if you think that's perhaps not such a good thing, then this is not the episode for you. Remember, this is a drive-by. Christmas time is a classic time traditionally in my my life uh, to, to reach for the Lego. From a young age, even before I started getting into role-playing games, I was always a, a big fan of Lego. I was in from the word go. My next door neighbor picked up the first set and she was like an adopted grandmother to me and used to play with that Lego. And then after that, it was sort of every birthday and Christmas thereafter, pocket money, all of that sort of thing was spent on Lego up until I started to get into Dungeons and Dragons and some of the the money went towards that eventually it was swallowed up by Games Workshop the the love of Lego I was never like a a hardcore fan I I liked it and I think a lot of the the thing about it was that the designer in me really liked the uh, functionality of it the build quality the the clutch power of the bricks always amazed me and the precision that it's produced with staggers me I, I just I just think it is really amazing stuff I've I've never delved deeply into the history or the law I can't really quote numbers of sets or anything like that. I I don't even know the proper names for the bricks. But I just know it's uh, a great toy. But is it a great tool? Now, for a long time, and dating back to the the, the sort of my early years of D&D and discovering graph paper, it wasn't long before I made the link between Lego and graph paper. And at the time I actually designed a um, Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder was on TV. I'm pretty sure it was Blue Thunder. And then later Airwolf. But um, I always liked helicopter kits for Lego. And uh, I made a kind of um, a Lego blue thunder using space lego and what was town lego later to become city lego so i made this kind of blue thunder but it was not like one of my usual models i actually sat down and designed it on square paper and then swapped the design took the design showed it with a buddy of mine and uh, we sort of uh, used it like a lego instructions to make a few of these Blue Thunder type helicopters. And I don't think I, I can't remember, but I don't think I ever did that again. That was a one time only. But recently I was talking about the possibilities of Lego for wilderness, heck, um, not hex maps, wilderness maps. Uh, of course, it translates straight into dungeon maps you can do your your uh, dwarven forge type of 3d scenery if you wanted to and playing some more tabletop war games and getting into some uh, dragon rampant and osprey games i'm looking at my lego collection again and thinking yeah you know if uh, one of the scenarios in the uh, one of the special forces covert ops type of rule sets is on a ship and they've modeled a like an oil tanker or something like that 
And when I first read it, I thought, oh, yeah, that's all right, but it looks really cool. They've got all them correct miniatures and they've got this model ship that they've scratch built. Um, well, if you use Lego, then all of that sort of stuff becomes a lot easier. And, you know, the the possibilities are, are only limited by your collection and your imagination, and I love stuff like that. And you haven't got so much of a storage problem because it's all reusable. When you're done with it, take it apart, put it back together, maybe take some photographs in case you want to build it again or or whatever. But uh, so that's a that's a massive plus point for it. And then a few years back now, they came out with Lego games. And one of the big things with the Lego games was this rubber Lego dice. Um certain i've talked about it before but this this lego die with removable faces so you could stick all sorts of different lego bits and pieces on these different faces or you can even build it as a regular d6 can't imagine why you'd want to necessarily but if you love the dice they roll really well because they're kind of bouncy so uh, you, you just get a nice roll off them a little bit uh, wild but it all adds to the fun so there's these dice and a dice idea that I'm playing with involves um, lasers and feelings or in this instance I'm actually using books and bullets by uh, Ray Otis uh, and looking to do a Scooby Doo thing for around Christmas time and and that takes that makes use of uh, colors rather than numbers and um, I won't say too much more about that, but it brings me on to another aspect of Lego, and that's the fact that I game with my kids. With COVID and we've been locked down, I've ended up with this situation that half of our D&D group is online, half of us are sitting in the room, and sometimes it's a, a little bit like juggling soot, trying to keep people engaged and everything else. And I introduced a Lego dice tower. So there it is, once again, displaying its utility. But it's fun. It's super multicoloured. The kids were intrigued when I was building it, got a bit involved. My daughter loves Lego. My, uh, my young son, he, he goes through phases of it. He, he particularly likes the... Uh, the minifigures and uh, messing about building little minifigures. Well, there you go. So they're straight away interested. Uh, Dad's got the Lego out, he's messing about with something and they love to sit and, and play Lego and we exchange ideas and it's um, a nice bit of uh, family bonding in our house. And, and that's another reason why it always comes out at Christmas, something we can sit down and uh, mess about with together. Now, if we can do that and tie that in with a little bit of gaming and some, uh, some uh, like a role-playing adventure, so much the better. I can see ways that players can get involved and instead of just asking um, your players questions and what do they see and this and that, maybe they could just throw a few bricks on the table. Maybe I could get the kids to like build a spooky house or something, something that that they're invested in, and then I put the adventure to it, or we put the adventure to it, and then play that out and see how that goes. So um, I'm, I'm really uh, enthusiastic and determined to cross these streams, the, the RPG and tabletop games and family gaming with... Lego or other construction toys are available, of course. Uh, it, it just seems like there's so much potential. In fact, ah, I nearly forgot, I discovered online a resource. It's kind of a community game that's been put, put together and led by this one particular guy. Been going since uh, 2000 and it's called Brick Wars, spelt uh B R I K Wars. So he's dropped the C and it's a, a rule set for for 
kind of more like war gaming or skirmish gaming using Lego. I actually think it's pretty fun on paper. Um, haven't got it to the table yet, but I'm thinking to do a little bit of gaming with Sunny in a similar way to what we've been doing with Dragon Rampant. Going to give this Brick Wars a try, and that's uh, brickwars.com, I believe, if anybody's interested in checking that one out. It's super fun. It's kind of tongue-in-cheek. It takes a bit of a swipe at big, busy, uh, big business and the corporations. Uh, it's a bit anarchistic. Uh, anarchist? Oh, what is it? <laughs> oh, anarchistic. I don't know. I still don't know if that's right. It doesn't sound right. But you know what I mean. Um, so loads of potential there. My apologies if you're not a Lego fan and there's not enough gaming content here for you. But um, yeah, uh, I, I won't I won't take offence if, if you decide to skip this one. But probably a little bit late saying that now. Take care. I'll catch you later. Thank you for listening to this Spike Pit Drive-By episode. If you've enjoyed the show, consider spreading the word via social media. Take care. Catch you later.